Well, hello, Merry Christmas, and welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a very pleasant Christmas Eve edition of Sunday Stuff and Things. And on this Sunday Stuff and Things, we have many stuff and things to talk about, including upcoming videos, things that you can look forward to on Stuff and Things, Stuff and Things plays and working. I'm going to give a shout out to a very pleasant viewer that I met out in the wild, and then we'll be opening Christmas gifts. It is Christmas, and I have some gifts to open. So let's get into it. I can make room on my desk here. Okay, so what can you look forward to on Stuff and Things, Stuff and Things Plays, and Working? Well, coming up this week on Wednesday, yes, I am going to be showing you this. It's going to be a first impressions video for a very cool Polaroid camera that I've been able to get my hands on. This is a Polaroid SX70 Sonar that I had refurbished. I got it very cheaply in not quite working condition on eBay. And then I had it cleaned, lubricated, just taken care of. I had it converted to Polaroid 600 film from Polaroid SX70 film. And it is one of the coolest cameras that has ever existed, in my opinion. And I'm going to be doing a video about this on Wednesday. It's not going to be the full review. I will do a full kind of definitive video on this camera eventually once I've had more time to really get my head around using it. But this will be sort of an introduction to this camera and my first impressions on using it. I love this thing. I think it is so cool the way it folds up. This was made in 1978, people, and it has autofocus, and it's amazing. Glass lens, single lens reflex camera, just absolutely fantastic. So that's coming up. The week after that, we will have the full review for Sutliff Paradoxical, the first impressions video posted last week. Then on working, the this coming Friday will be working episode 18, a cool full episode of us pouring a very large footing. And it all went very smoothly this time. Smooth like butter. So check that out. And then the Tears of the Series, Tears of the Series, the Tears of the Kingdom series is continuing on Stuff and Things Plays for a little bit longer. I think the very last episode will be posting on January 1st, so don't miss it. Lots of good stuff coming up. It's a Christmas miracle. So this will be a little bit of a shorter Sunday Stuff and Things because it is Christmas Eve. I have lots of family stuff to do, and I'm sure you do as well. You'd like to get back to that cozy hearth sipping eggnog, unwrapping gifts, digesting your turkey. But before I get to the gifts that I'm going to be opening on my Christmas, I would like to shout out a very nice viewer named Shelby. I was out with my friend Chance last weekend, and we were at a local bar, and as I was up ordering a drink, a very pleasant woman came up to me and asked if I were Bradley from Stuff and Things. And I said, yes, I am. And she said that her and her fiance have been watching a lot. He's been getting into pipes and the pipe hobby, and they've been watching my videos, and she just wanted to say hi. And I shook her hand, and she was very nice and very pleasant. It was kind of the perfect interaction with the viewer. So I just wanted to say thank you to Shelby for being such a nice and well-adjusted human being, and I wanted to shout out her fiance as well. Hello, Shelby's fiance. I hope you're still watching and enjoying the channel. All right, gang. It's Christmas, and I have a couple packages from Benefactors, I guess, are actually... Okay, this is from tpipes.com, and this is from tpipes.com. I have two packages that were in my P.O. box, and I have another package, a Christmas gift, as it were, from our good friend, Chris Coffey. He's been a viewer and supporter for a very long time, and uh, we have a gift from him as well, so we'll leave that for last. The first gift we will be opening, Merry Christmas, is this one from tpipes.com. I will cut here with my Bark River Ultralife, Ultralight Bushcrafter. Let's see what Santa brought us this year, shall we? Hmm. The box has been opened. The packaging material has been removed, and inside we have a tin of something. It is... Ah, how perfect for the season. For the season, it is Plum Pudding Christmas Spirit by Seattle Pipe Club. 
I don't know how long this has been in my P.O. box. I guess I'm getting to it a little bit late. But there you go, plum pudding Christmas spirit. So that's interesting. So nothing says Christmas, blah, 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 like plum pudding, Christmas spirit. Design a limited edition of plum pudding special reserve. So, so I'm not sure if there's a difference between this and the normal um, barrel age version, the, the uh, special edition barrel age version of plum pudding. But I'll do some research on this. Maybe we'll do a video on this. So very appropriate for the season. Plum pudding. Christmas spirit. We have another package here. Let's crack it open. Ugh. Son of a... There we go. Yeah. Aha, there's actually some sort of missive inside as well. Put that aside. One tin, again, seems like a lot of packaging for one tin. And in this is, aha, Kringle Flake, Holiday Edition 2023. Again, I probably should have opened this a little bit earlier, but I don't get to my P.O. box every single weekend. Kringle Flake 2023. Very cool. Let's see what we have here. I'm just going to be reading like a press release, but we'll see. <clears throat> Kringle Flake Holiday Edition 2023. Official launch date 12-5-2023 or 5-12 for those of you in the UK or Europe. Aged 23 years, U.S. grown Red Virginias are mixed with a very special tea. Stoved Caterini. This unique ingredient brings the mellow sweetness of stoved teas to the herbal oriental. Finally, the mixture is boldly spiced with Perique from 2003, 20 years old, the last of this stock that has graced the series since 2023. Kringle Flake 2023 marries tradition and innovation in a flavorful mixture that unites our drive to explore the art of blending with the staples that have made this series a cherished holiday tradition. Well, there you go. Kringle Flake Holiday Edition 2023. I will have to apologize to the good people at tpipes.com for not opening these earlier, but they're very appropriate for Christmas gifts right now on Christmas Eve. So we have our Seattle Pipe Club Christmas Spirit, and then we have Kringle Flake 2023. Beautiful, wonderful Christmassy blends. Very cool. And now, the package from our good friend Chris Coffee. Let's see where I can even get into this thing. I believe it opens on the front here. A lot of tape. What do we have inside? We have a note. Before I look at the tins, I'm going to read the note. Or maybe I should look at the tins and then read the note. <clears throat> Dear Bradley, I hope you and Diamond are doing well. I just got back from a trip to Scotland for my oldest daughter's wedding. The wedding was beautiful, and I am very happy for my daughter and my new son-in-law. Congratulations. I arrived in Scotland a week early so that I could enjoy some vacation time before the wedding. In Edinburgh, I found a few different tea shops with pipe teas that are difficult to find here in the U.S., the tin of Gawith. Okay, so he's going to get into some of this stuff here. Let's look at what we've got. Very cool. Thank you very much, Chris. Ooh, look at that. Another very appropriate blend for Christmas. We have Gawith and Hogarth Seasonal Reserve with a beautiful Christmassy scene there. Giant warning label as well. Let me show you the back. We have a nice little Christmassy scene there as well. I've never actually heard of Seasonal Reserve by Gawith and Hogarth, and I'm looking forward to trying it out. Thank you very much, Chris. And then we have got, ah, Sheraton Victorian mixture. Dark Virginia teas with Louisiana Perique. So supposedly similar to Elizabethan, this is a blend I've heard of, and I am definitely looking forward to checking that out as well. A very cool vapor 
So thank you so much. Let's read the rest of this note. Um, the tin of Gawith and Hogarth seasonal reserve from 2022 was part of the very last three pack in the Robert Graham shop. In fact, the three pack was actually in a different Robert Graham shop in England. And since someone from that shop in England was bringing some whiskies up to the Edinburgh shop, he agreed to bring the three pack of Gawith and Hogarth 2023 seasonal reserve for me. Wow. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. The other tin Sheraton Victorian mixture comes with an interesting story. I went to Jeffrey Street Whiskey and Tea in Old Town, Edinburgh, partly because their website said that they had Gawa St. James Flake in stock. I was disappointed to learn that their website was wrong, and they did not have St. James Flake in stock. But while I was looking at other pipe teas, the guy behind the counter told me an interesting story. He claims that Peterson only bought the right to the names of the old Dunhill blends, while Sheraton bought the actual recipes of the old Dunhill blends. This seems dubious to me, since STG blended both the old Dunhill blends and the current Peterson blends, but I figured it might make for an interesting pipe tea review video to see if you can discern any difference between Sheraton's Victorian mixture, Victorian mixture, and Peterson's Elizabethan mixture. Here you go. Merry Christmas. That is interesting. I don't believe the man behind the counter, even though he is a man behind the counter in a pipe shop. My extensive research at the time has led me to believe that, yes, the Peterson blends are exactly the same as the previous Dunhill blends made by the exact same manufacturer. And I have had countless tins of the uh, old Dunhill Elizabethan and the new Peterson Elizabethan, and they are pretty much identical. They are identical, other than the variation you'll get from year to year. Um, so yeah, I don't believe old man behind counter at the store, but that is a cool story. And I'm definitely going to check out the Victorian mixture and see if it is close to Elizabethan. God bless you and Diamond this Christmas season. God has given me so much by sending his own son to become one of us in order to save us from our sins. And so I wanted to give you these gifts to taste and see that God is good. I also hope you might be willing to visit Redeemer Lutheran Church on Smith Road or Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church on Texas Street. In any case, God bless you and Merry Christmas, your friend, Chris Coffey. Thank you so much, Chris, for the very thoughtful gifts. Very cool trip to Scotland that you were able to take. And you were able to bring back some very interesting pipe blends. And very appropriate for the Christmas season, all these blends that we received today. It's a Christmas miracle. So cool. Now, gang, it is time for hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. If you have a question you would like me to answer it on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, or you can write to me via Patreon and go right to the front of the line. You can hit that super thanks button under this video and go right to the front of the line, or you can leave me questions, comments, and feedback under my YouTube videos in the comment section. First, we have a YouTube super thanks from Isaac Kirkwood or sorry, Isaac Kirkwood-Smith, 5182. Thank you so much. Isaac says, thank you for all the work you put into your videos. Do you still use your clay pipe? Do you have any more thoughts on it after breaking it in? Would also be interested to hear if you still use your falcon pipe. Cheers from New Zealand. Um, thank you so much for that super thanks. And yes, I do use the clay pipe on occasion. Not a ton because I don't love, I clench a lot. And it's not super comfortable to clench with the stem that the clay pipe has. So it's something that I'm only going to use if I'm kind of in a sedentary place where I can put my pipe down. Um, but it's good. And then the Falcon pipe, I can't find it. I don't know what happened to it. I know it's got to be around somewhere, but I haven't been able to find it for months and months and months. So that's something I need to remember to try to track that thing down. Next, we have some feedback from last week's Sunday Stuff and Things. We have another super thanks from Scott M. Thank you very much, Scott M. Scott says, nothing to discuss, just wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Well, thank you very much, Scott, and a Merry Christmas to you. At Simon Brown 1486 says, I think it's called a Nick measuring contest, not a dick measuring contest. That was the title of last week's episode. Go watch that episode if you want to know what's going on with that. At Steve-MZ5UY says, I wouldn't pay attention to the idiots. I use softy bits on some of my pipes so I don't damage the stems. And yeah, that's another thing that I neglected to mention, the controversy around using pipe bits on your pipes. I like to use them because it's more comfortable for me to clench my pipes with them. But another good reason is if you want to preserve your pipe stems, they will help preserve your pipe stems. You don't get, it's possible to even bite through your stems entirely. So it's nice to have the bit on there for that. But whatever anyone likes to do, they should do. 
at Beetlefang says, the rubber bit comments and T strength is just normal human behavior from high school. Some mature out of it, and some still try to fit in their letterman jacket. Don't let it bother you. The pipe community as a whole is very accepting, so as I pack a Costello with some lowly RLP6, don't let the outliers bother you. They can S their manly roadkill, and I'll S mine. Your mileage may vary. Thank you very much, Beetlefang. And I hope nobody thought that I was actually bothered by the comment. I just picked that out because it was indicative of several comments, um, illustrative of several of the comments that I got, and I thought it would be a good topic for discussion. Believe me, I wasn't losing any sleep over it. Um, at Doing It Wrong says, I was using custom-made granite stems on my pipes, but kept biting through them because I'm such a badass. I've had to resort to tungsten carbide stems. Thankfully, my softy bits have kept me from biting through those. Excellent. And at Tom Brown 1898 says, as William Holden said to Faye Dunaway in Network, I quit comparing genitals back in the schoolyard. <laughs> Polaroid cameras can surprise you. I took a picture of my grandfather with one of the black and white uh, paper print cameras, so I think a pack film peel apart camera. And though the flash didn't go off, the light behind him produced an amazingly sharp and deep image. Great show today. Thanks, Tom. Now we have some feedback from the Sutliff Paradoxical First Impressions video. This is from at Jason21602. I tried most of the bird series. Uno and Eccentric were my favorites. Hope you can get a hold of them. Paradoxical was my least favorite, but high quality tea nonetheless. Interesting. Yeah, I kind of looked into some of the older, other blends in the series. Maybe I'll be able to get my hands on some of them. Maybe not, but they all seem interesting. At Chris Portislander 2458 says, Nutty, chocolatey, and reminiscent of cigars. I have to try this one. Yeah, and remember though, it doesn't taste like cigars to me. It just kind of has a feel of cigars. Interesting. Speaking of cigars, I think I still have some Padrones stuck away somewhere. I'll have to look into that. Uh, yeah, because I re-upped my Boveda packs in my little Tupperware that had my cigars in them. I don't have an actual humidor. Yeah, remember that for Christmas. Um, at Tom Brown 1898 says, Pear Jensen is the chief blender for McBaron. Uh, yes, I have heard that. Which owns Sutliff. In case anyone doesn't know, I haven't tried any of this series, but Brian Doran, Beans 316, has pretty much savaged the ones he's reviewed. Interesting. I watched his videos every Saturday morning, always enjoy them, um, but seldom agree with him. His palate and mine are about 180 degrees apart. I'm really looking forward to your full review of this one. Balkan Sobrani had a blend called v uh, Virginia No. 10. We're talking in the 70s now. The flavor and aroma were fantastic, but whether it was the cigar leaf, the bright leaf tips, or the Syrian Latakia, the Nick level was just too much for me. Wish you better luck with Paradoxical. Good show today. Thanks so much, Tom. And yeah, I ended up liking paradoxical, paradoxical quite a bit. Stay tuned for that full review coming up, not this, this week, but the week after. Thank you all for the questions, comments, and feedback. Please keep that coming in. It really helps make the show go. But now it is time for the very best part of the show, and that is where we thank our Patreon supporters. Remember, if you would like to support the channels on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below, and it's much appreciated. Helps pay for this fancy camera that's filming this video, the lights that are shining upon me, products and cool things to show you in reviews. And every week, we like to shout out those who support the channels at $25 or more a month. People like Glenn Dunnington, Jason Buckner, MD of the North. I don't know why I closed my eyes that long. David Gaudreau, Ryan McFadden, Arcturus, Ashes of the Phoenix, and Jonathan Proctor. And of course, the maniacs, the crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month, people like Bob McGee. And we'll never forget our dearly departed friend and Hall of Fame member, Peter Straub. Gang, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas or whatever holiday you may be celebrating this time of year. I hope you're able to, stay, to spend some time with family. I hope you're getting some time off and that you just have a nice, pleasant, relaxing time. That's kind of what I look forward to the most around Christmas is just a time to sort of <sighs> take a breath, decompress. Um, I was about to say maybe play a video game or something, but I haven't played a single game in like the last couple of weeks. Um, but just, you know, pursue your hobbies, pursue your interests, really just re-energize yourself for the new year ahead. I know I'm going to try to do some of that stuff during the couple days that I have off for the Christmas holiday, and I hope you will as well. 
So, Merry Christmas, and until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. <laughs>